um, welcome to my X-Men Apocalypse review. Um, this is the second time I've had to film this because last time my audio was all crazy. Hopefully it's better this time. Um, so my name is Marissa, or Rogue, um, but my rogue's, my rogue hair is fading, but that's okay. That's alright. Um, but yeah, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering if, uh, the reviews are right from the critics about X-Men Apocalypse, and, um, I don't think so. Um, it has its issues, not gonna lie, but I'm going to talk about those in this video. Um, I'm going to do top pros and, um, top lows, I guess, or cons. Pros and lows. That sounds good. Anyway, um, I will say, um, what was I going to say? This is the problem with ADHD, people. This, this happens to me a lot. Uh, uh I swear. I swear this happens to me all the time. Well, uh, the movie's good. I mean, I really, I really enjoyed the movie. It, it's, it's got some issues. Um, but what film does not? Um, I think it's a little less character driven than some of the previous X-Men films because I loved how character driven they've always been in the series. And it felt a little bit more action-y, I guess. They skipped out on some of my favorite moments, or what could have been some of my favorite moments, and kind of went more of a Disney route, I would say. Uh, in my opinion, feel free to disagree, but Disney tends to skip out on character as much as they do uh, action. So that was one of my small complaints about the film, but I will go into detail. Um, for those that do not know about Apocalypse, uh, like the premise, Apocalypse is an ancient mutant. I really hope that you would know this, but whatever. An ancient mutant who comes to modern times, or modern times, 80s, um, and wreaks havoc upon civilization. So that's just the premise. If you need to know more, grab a comic or watch the trailer. I don't really care. So without further ado, we will hop right over to my top tens and my top... 10 cons. One more thing, there are definitely going to be spoilers ahead, so you're warned. Alright, before I say anything, uh, I just want to let you know, I am sick, so if I have a weird voice to you, um, that's why I have strep or something. They're really not quite sure. They're waiting for the test results back. So anyway, with that said, uh, let's start with pros. So, this is going to be kind of nitpicky at some moments and then like serious issues at the next. Uh, so it's in no particular order. So number one, uh, it felt like the first and second film at times. I don't know about you, but I think a lot of fans of this series uh, would tell you that X2 is the greatest X-Men movie ever. Um, it is a great film. And X-Men, of course, is the one that started it. And they have some of the best moments in those films. You really get the school and uh, the professor and all that stuff, all the stuff that I come that I've come to love in comics. You get that. Um, number two was Wolverine. Wolverine coming, uh, coming out of his little box thingy-ma-bop, whatever you want to call that cell, I guess. That was pretty awesome. Stepping out in his uh, Weapon X costume, though they could have spent a little bit of time and money, a bit more time and money on that one. But that's okay. I'll leave it alone at that. It was awesome. Uh, number three is Weapon X in general. The, um, the facility was really, really well done, and it reminded me once again of X2, and, um, I just, I really like it, though I'm a big Weapon X fan in general, so. Uh, number four is Apocalypse. All you Apocalypse haters out there just look stupid right now, because he was awesome. I thought they did a great job writing him as an actual threatening villain, uh, unlike, uh, what is it? Age of Ultron. That was the worst. I know Fox didn't do that, but still, that's what comes to my mind when I think of horrible villains. So, luckily they didn't do that. Uh, number five, the main characters were spot on, aside from Mystique. I will, I will, um, talk about that later. But, the main characters, they cast everyone so well. Um, you know, everyone did such a great job with their characters. I would love to see more of Jubilee. 
Again, I'll talk about that later as well. But, like, the main cast did a wonderful job. And I was very, very surprised. I guess you could say. Uh, number six, the school. Um, I liked all the shots of the professor in the school teaching and, you know, different different things like that I, I always enjoy. And I've missed those from previous X-Men films. You know, they haven't put as big of an emphasis on the school as I would have wished. So that was nice to see again. Uh, number seven, the costumes. All the costumes were spot on. Well, you know, as spot on as they can be for a <laughs> Fox film. Um, but, okay, you can't deny that the ending scene with the young X-Men, they had the coolest outfits that I have ever seen. So, that was awesome. And definitely a highlight. Uh, with that said, again, the only one that I wish they would have spent a bit time, more time and money on is the Weapon X costume, because I've been waiting for that one. But... That's just, you know, me being nitpicky. Uh, number eight is the Phoenix. It was so awesome to see the legit Phoenix um, on screen. Not the Phoenix, you know, in number three. <laughs> but, you know, Gene actually turn into, take a bird form, I guess. It was just really cool to see, and I, I love it because Gene is one of my, one of my favorite X-Men or X-Women if you will, but, um, yeah, she was awesome. And then with that, going into the same, you know, uh, category, if you will, number nine is the telepathic fight in the astral, astral plane. Bleh. Um, that was awesome. I, that's like a highlight of the entire X-Men series altogether. That was like the coolest fight I have ever seen in any X-Men film, and I've been waiting for that, because, you know, we get to see all that awesome stuff in comics, all the comic book fans, they go in there, and they know what a telepathic fight looks like, nobody ever, you know, none of the movie people know what that's like, and now they do, so, it confused our dad a little bit, though, or my dad, okay, number 10 would be the opening X-Men sequence, it was so cool, they did a great job on the, um, on the timeline, showing you know what has changed in history and that's just a small little thing but just something that I've come to love uh, in the X-Men series the opening sequence sequences all right moving on to cons hopefully I don't run out of time <laughs> number one was mystique I am so so tired of mystique mystique is a cold heartless blue blue villain and I'm tired of her tired of her being a blonde hero with self-esteem issues that leads the X-Men. It's the same plot over and over again, and I'm tired of it. Why? Why? I guess, you know what, it's Jennifer Lawrence. They have to be like, oh, well, see, we have Jennifer Lawrence in this film. Stop it. We're so over it. Just stop. Uh, number two, same dialogue from previous films. Once again, I think this is a big problem. One of the film's main problems is that it just feels a little bit repetitive. Um, Professor X, Magneto, Mystique, and Hank. They always have the same thing to say. Uh, don't get me wrong, the acting is spot on, but I would like the writing to be a little bit different because it just feels like it's taken from previous films. Um, where am I? Number three, poor pacing and editing. This is the film's biggest problem. Um, this is what's causing it to get bad reviews with critics. It is insanely choppy and very hard to follow at times. And um, once again, I'm going to say this is the problem that Age of Ultron had. I do not like movies that are not well paced and just kind of feel like they're taking out like details here and there all the time. Uh, Jubilee, for instance, like what I don't know. There were just like little things here and there, like when they were going to the mall, the X Men were the young X Men were gonna go to the mall, and it just it got confusing. Um, number four is no '80s cheese. Once again, I'm gonna say Jubilee. <sighs> you wasted her. Um, come on, you did such a great job in the '60s and '70s, you know, with setting that time. 
you have the 80s. The 80s are the coolest time ever, and you did not take advantage of it. And that was really upsetting to me. I wanted to see the young X-Men go to the mall. Like, I, I don't know. They just, that part just drove me insane. There was no epic cheese. I think there were like two 80s songs in the entire thing. Um, not enough focus, this is number five, not enough focus on young X-Men. Um, this is Mystique's story, once again. It's not a story, it's not the origin that we were looking for for the young X-Men. Um, Scott gets a little bit of one, Storm gets eh, a little bit, Jean gets nothing, but I mean, it just, it was, it did not put a focus on them, and that's what I was looking for, forward to. Um, number six is aging. This is a, this is a bit nitpicky as well, but come on, you could age your people up a little bit. It's just like when Professor X sees Moira and he goes, oh, she hasn't aged at all. You're right, Professor. She hasn't aged at all because the makeup department failed in that area. All right, number seven, questionable motives from Psylocke. I did not like Psylocke to begin with. Not in comics. I like Psylocke in comics. But them just adding her, it was like, let's just do that to, you know, make all the, all the comic book people go, oh my gosh, it's Psylocke. Anyway, why did she decide to slice Apocalypse neck, Apocalypse's neck all of a sudden? We don't really know. Why was she angry with the X-Men all of a sudden? We don't really know. Um, eight, awkward dialogue at times. Um, yeah. Some of it is a little bit awkwardly written. Like when the young X-Men are talking to Mystique about how she's, uh, their, how she's their hero. That entire scene was a little bit cringeworthy. Because it was so awkward and did not feel natural at all. Uh, number nine, no Jean Grey backstory whatsoever. Why didn't we get... You know the the car crash where Jean discovered her powers. That is like one of my favorite moments, and they did not do it. And hold on one second, I'm about to run out of time. All right, I added more time. All right, so number ten, this last one, Havoc's rushed death. It was like the writers were like, "Well, we gotta kill somebody off," and they're like, "How about Havoc?" And one of them was like, "Yeah, that's a great idea," and there was really no like dealing with it it was just kind of like Havoc's here one second and the next second he's gone and I know that one of you is gonna be like that's the way death works but no it was awkward and nobody dealt with it properly and it was just like a little thing that everyone forgot about except me because it bothered me so there you go that's just my opinion so all in all I kind of felt like the movie did not stand on its own very well um it was a good movie don't get me wrong but I'm saying like um, it felt more like it was just kind, kind of like, kind of like it should have been played with Days of Future Past, if that makes sense, except they were like, but hold on, it can't be, like, let's set it ten years in the future. Um, I don't even know if that makes sense, but I mean, I feel like it's kind of part of that movie, except it wasn't, obviously. I don't know if that even makes sense, but it makes sense up here, okay? So anyway, some reviewers are saying that this goes down as the worst in the franchise other than Origins, but right next to Origins, and that is so far from true. I do not agree with that. Um, in case you're wondering my opinion on, you know, how it ranks in the X-Men uh, franchise, film franchise, I will tell you. Uh, Days of Future Past, number one, uh, The Wolverine, X2, X-Men, uh, Apocalypse, uh, X-Men 3, First Class, don't hurt me, and Origins. Those would be my, my picks, you know, for how they rank in the series. That's just me. Again, feel free to disagree. I think Brian Singer is doing a wonderful job altogether, though, with the X-Men, and I would love to see him continue to do so. Um, I think Brian Singer has done an amazing job changing or, you know, he did change the way, in my opinion at least, and a lot of people's opinions, he did change the way that X-Men, or, um, superhero movies, you know, were viewed. Um, I know when I saw it that I was afraid of it suffering from the cheese factor, and, you know, X-Men does have its cheesy moments, but I remember just falling in love with these characters because they weren't painted as super all the time, they were painted as people, 
And maybe that's just a little bit of what was lacking in this film, if that makes sense. But, you know, everyone has their off days. Give Brian Singer a break. He's done a wonderful job. Uh, so yeah, but I will see you all later. I hope that helps you make a, de make a decision whether or not you want to go see it. Or if you've already seen it, you know, let me know your thoughts on the movie. You know, so I'll see you all later. Uh, yeah.